Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing 35 Easter Dollar Tree DIYs. You will notice that each of these crafts is going to have a number in the bottom left hand corner. That way you can easily jot down the number of any craft that you like and then reference the video back and it will be super easy to find. So definitely bookmark this video for the future. And if you are new here, please do consider subscribing down below. For our first DIY, I'm going to be using one of these glass vases from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be using some of these wood shaped bunny cutouts. I think that these are just so beautiful. So I knew I had to do a DIY that was really just going to just put them front and center so you could see how nice they are. So all we're going to be doing is hot gluing these bunnies around this vase to create a really high end looking vase that is super simple, but it's definitely going to be really eye catching. I'm starting off by just hot gluing my first bunny rabbit to the bottom of the vase and you want to make sure that it is against a flat surface when you are gluing it down. That way you get a nice even first row. And to glue these to the vase, I am using my Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. You guys have probably heard me talk about these a million times, but they really are my favorite. I'll leave these ones linked down below. The reason I wanted to stick with these is because it does say that it can work for glass as well as wood. So I figured that this would be a nice strong hold. But if you are having any issues, you can also add a little bit of E6000 along with the hot glue. That way you get a really strong permanent hold, but you also get that quick hold from the hot glue. Each row is going to have eight rabbits and we will be doing three rows. So two packs of these little wood rabbits work out perfectly since we will be needing all 24 and you get 12 in a pack. So after I had my first row all glued down, I started my second row and I did stagger it a little bit just to kind of give it some more visual interest. And for my third and final row, I did go back to the same pattern as my first row and the same placement. And the third row is going to peek up past the top of the glass a little bit. The ears are going to stick out, but I think that that gives it such a fun look. Now all you have to do is just add some flowers. I think that faux florals would be perfect in this, but I did already have some fresh hydrangeas. So I did want to add them in just to see how it looked. And I think it turned out so beautiful. It is such an easy and quick DIY, but trust me, it will look absolutely stunning as a centerpiece on your Easter table. You're going to need some yarn from the Dollar Tree. And this is hands down my favorite yarn that Dollar Tree sells. It is just such nice quality and really beautiful. So I picked it up in these three pastel colors here. And this next DIY is actually inspired by an amazing subscriber. I just wanted to give her a shout out, Ray MTC. Thank you so much for all of your support. It honestly does not go unnoticed. And she had recommended that we transform this previous DIY here. You guys might remember this yarn heart DIY into an Easter version. So that is what we are doing today. I'm going to be using some of these wood ornaments to basically be the base for our yarn. So I'm going to be using three of these wood eggs as well as three of these wood bunnies. So this DIY is very easy. If you missed the last one, don't miss this one because it's seriously so cute and honestly only takes a couple of minutes to really put together. So all you have to do is just take one of your wood ornaments and your yarn. You want to take your thumb, hold down a piece of it in the center. Now you want to just wrap your yarn around the egg in all different directions. Make sure you wrap it around that start piece just a couple of times to make sure that you hold it into place. But then you kind of want to vary up the way you're wrapping your egg. That way it just kind of looks more interesting and organic when you're all done. So here is the egg once I had all of the wood covered and it was fully wrapped. So now all I have to do is just trim off that extra yarn in the back and then you'll have a little bit of a tail and just to secure this all I did was just pull up a couple of those strands and just tuck that tail underneath. And then I just repeated that same process with my other two eggs and made a pink one as well as a blue one. So here they are all finished and looking really sweet. And now it was time to do the bunny. So I will say that these were a bit trickier than the egg just because of the shape of them is a lot different. And the hardest part were the ears. They were kind of tricky to figure out, but it did end up coming together pretty quickly. And I do think that they turned out really sweet looking in the end. 
Here is my rabbit once he was fully wrapped up in that yarn. So now to just kind of finish it off, I just repeat that same process. I trimmed off my yarn and then I just tucked that tail under some strands in the back. And here he is all done. And then I just repeated that same process again with my other two wood bunnies. I did just want to show you again one more time how I did the ears because those were the trickiest part. So I just went ahead and wrapped them around this way up until I got to the point where the ears were kind of split. And then I just wrapped it around each ear individually. And then you'll see once I had the ears wrapped up basically as high as I could go without the yarn slipping off the top, then I switched to just wrapping it around the body to cover up the top portion of the ears. And here are all three of my bunnies once I had them wrapped up with the yarn. And I have to say that this is definitely one of my favorite DIYs that I have done for Easter. These are so much fun. You have to try these if you try anything from this video because they're just so sweet looking. In this next DIY, I'm going to be using this frame picture from the Dollar Tree. So sometimes they have this in their picture frame department, other times they have it in the decor area, so you kind of just have to look around. But the saying on the inside does not matter, they come with different ones, but we're gonna switch out that picture anyway. So you just wanna open up the tabs in the back, and I actually created a free printable for you guys for this DIY to make it super easy. So I'm gonna leave a link to my blog down below in the description box. So here's the blog post. Once you get there, you just want to scroll down to the bottom where it says free printable and click on the first one. And for this DIY, I actually created the bunny in five different colors. That way you can just choose your favorite. I'm going to be using pink today and then you can just print it out. I did just want to mention that you will see another free printable underneath that one. And it is these two here and these are going to be for crafts later on in this video. So I did print mine out on cardstock. I do recommend printing it out on a thicker paper. It it just tends to work better for these types of crafts and now I'm just going to go ahead and cut it out and then place it right over that board that I removed from the picture frame and then just reinsert it and close up those tabs in the back. I think this looks super cute as is and perfect for a tear tray but if you want to go one step further you can add some of those Dollar Tree carrots to really make this one pop. So I'm just kind of placing them here and I wanted them to have a little bit of a 3D effect. So once I had my placement right, I just used some hot glue to secure them in place. You can use the handle up top to hang this one, but this one does also stand up all on its own in this frame. So you can kind of just place it wherever so it makes it super easy to style. Next, we are going to be transforming these carrot Easter eggs. So you get three in a pack and you can just find these with all of the other Easter eggs. They have a bunch of fun shapes, but I thought that this one in particular would be a really fun DIY. So I'm also going to be using some twine and my hot glue gun again. So first, I just want to make sure that I hot glue the top of the carrot down to the base. That way it doesn't pop off at all while we are wrapping our carrot in twine. So this next part is really easy, but it does get a little bit tedious. By the third one, my fingers were definitely tired. So I did pop on a really fun movie just to try and make the time go by a little quicker. So you can see here, there's no trick. I'm just hot gluing this twine all the way around the carrot. You just want to work in small patches. I started right on the neck of the carrot and then I just worked my way down in levels. But you will see here, I did put on these little fingertip protectors. Dollar Tree does sell some. I think they have two in a pack. These ones are a little bit longer and you get 10 in a pack. They're from Amazon. I'll leave them linked down below just in case you can't find the Dollar Tree ones or if those ones are not the right size. This pack does come with a few different sizes to fit your fingers. And trust me, if you have been burned by hot glue in the past, you know just how valuable these can be because they really do save your fingers when you're doing crafts like this. You can just trim off the twine, but I wasn't sure at this point if I was going to be standing them up or if I was going to be laying them on their side in a bowl. So I did want to make sure to finish off the bottom. And to do that, I just hot glued the twine kind of in a swirl pattern since the bottom is flat. And I was pretty surprised, but it did still stand up when I was all done. So this is all three eggs when they were completely covered in twine. And now we are going to be creating a new top. And to do this, I'm just going to be taking some cream colored felt. Dollar Tree does sell felt. I already had this one on hand, but I think that I got this one probably at Michael's or Joanne Fabrics, but they do have a few different colors to choose from at Dollar Tree. 
And to make the top of the carrot, I just cut the felt into a rectangle and then I just cut some strips from one end to the next. And I did leave the top intact. That way we would have a nice long strip to just hot glue right around the top of the carrot on that green part. I decided to go with this cream color because I did want to keep everything really neutral and high-end looking, but I do think that green felt would also be perfect for this craft. So now that we have a new top, you can see that green piece is still peeking out on top. So I do want to go ahead and just hot glue a little round piece of felt right over it just to cover it up. And now for the last step, I'm just going to be taking this carrot ribbon from Dollar Tree and cutting a piece that is long enough to tie around the top of the carrot here where it connects to the twine into a bow just to kind of make it a little bit more seamless and add just a tiny pop of color. I'm just going to repeat those same steps for my other two carrots and here is how everything turned out. I love these styled just like this in a row of three or you can even group a couple of them together with a bunny wrap. I'm going to be using this little bunny tail pick as well as one of the pots from the garden department at the Dollar Tree. So I would say this is like their medium sized pot. This one comes in a pack of two. And I'm also going to be using one of these foam floral blocks. So to get started, I'm just going to be cutting it down to size. So you can secure this into your pot with some hot glue, but you might not have to. I did not have to because by the time I squished it in, it was really secure. And now I'm just going to be using some Spanish moss to cover up that foam block. Now the wood stick attached to the bunny is going to be a little bit too long for this pot so you will have to cut it. So I'm just using my scissors here to kind of score the wood a little bit that way it was easier to snap in half. And now I'm just going to insert it into that foam block inside of the pot. Next I'm going to be adding three of these carrots to the right side of the pot. Next I'm going to be using one of these plant label markers that I found in the garden apartment at the Dollar Tree. So this free printable is available on my blog and the link for it is in the description box below. So I printed mine out on cardstock. Now I'm just going to take one of those plant labels and place it right over the image that way I can trace it out and then cut it out to the exact size. You can also just print this out on regular printer paper, but the cardstock does hold up a little bit better because we are going to be gluing it to that plastic plant marker. To attach it, a glue stick would work really well. I already had my hot glue gun out, so I decided just to put a little bit of hot glue to attach my picture to my plant marker. And now I'm just going to insert it into the little carrot garden. For a final touch, I'm just going to take some of that carrot ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to wrap it right around the pot and tie it into a bow. I just tied mine, but if yours is slipping down, you can secure it in place with a little bit of hot glue. And here is the final result. This little bunny is just too cute. For this next DIY, I'm going to be using these bunny head treat sacks, but we're not going to be putting treats in them today. So I'm going to be using two of them for this DIY. You get four in a pack. So I'm going to start off with just kind of cutting a deeper V into the top portion. I want the ears to be a little bit longer. And inside you will see some tags. You can just go ahead and rip those out or cut them out with your scissors. And I'm going to be filling it today with some polyfill. So I wanted to kind of just create these little plush heads. So just fill it up with a little bit of polyfill and then once you have it up to the ear portion, you want to take a piece of twine that comes in that pack and just wrap it around a couple times and then tie it into a bow. Next, you just want to kind of pull the ears apart a little bit and start to fluff them up and flatten them out to make them look larger. And a tip to have them stay exactly how you want is just to kind of model them how you want them to stay and then spray them with a little bit of hairspray. And now is the fun part. You get to accessorize your bunnies however you like so you can get really creative with this. I went pretty simple. I just wanted to make a boy and a girl one. So for the girl one, I decided to just use four of these mini flowers and just hot glue them into her hair. I think she looks really sweet. And then for the boy, I kind of wanted to make a carrot bow tie. So when I found these mini wooden carrots at Dollar Tree, I thought that they would just be perfect for this. So I'm going to get started by just taking two out of the pack and painting them. So I decided to go with kind of muted colors. So I just have my orange and my green here. Then once those were completely dry, I just hot glued them into place onto my bunny. And here is a closer look of the final result. 
this next DIY, you're going to need some of the nautical rope from Dollar Tree. So you can usually find this in their floral department and they have a couple different sizes. This is what I'm going to be using today. So you're also going to need some hot glue. You're going to be creating some rope bunny coasters and each coaster needs four feet of rope. So with this one strand of eight feet, we'll be able to make two separate coasters. So I'm going to get started by just taking my rope out of the package and dividing it in half. So you can just fold it right in half, make sure the ends are lined up and then just cut right at the top. That way you will have two pieces of rope that are four feet each. For this DIY, you do want to make sure you are working on a piece of parchment paper that is very important because it can get a little bit messy. So to start off with, I just put some hot glue on the end of my rope and I'm going to start to coil it. So it is important to also use a really good glue here. So I'm going to be using my Gorilla hot glue sticks. These are my favorite. They work really well and I think that they're kind of extra strong. I just picked them up from Amazon. I'll leave a link to them down below. So you're going to slowly start to coil it and you might see that the bottom is looking a little bit messy here. That is totally okay. All we really care about right now is that the top portion looks nice and clean because we are going to be covering up that bottom piece later. So you'll see when I do add my glue, I kind of stick to the bottom area. That way it doesn't seep up to the top. So after I had about three feet coiled up and hot glued together, my last foot is going to be used for the ears. So you want to make sure that you have enough rope left over to create two separate bunny ears and then just a little bit more to kind of just curve around to the bottom so it has a nice finished look. So I'm just kind of mapping out where I really want my ears and I just wanted to make sure I had enough rope to make them even. So once I did that, I just put a little bit of hot glue in the top portion at the head there just to create that divide of the two ears and you want to let that dry completely before you start to hot glue your second ear. Once that's dry, I'm just going to move on to my second ear here, put a little bit of hot glue, reshape that, and then hold it there for about 30 seconds or so until that is completely dry. And then I can just finish up by hot gluing the rest of my strand to my coaster. So here the coaster is almost done. We just have to cover up that back because the front looks great, but the back is looking a little bit messy from all of that glue. So to cover this up and just to finish off the coaster, I'm going to be using these adhesive cork bottoms. Dollar Tree actually sells large sheets of the adhesive cork and you can find it in their crafter square, but I just have these on hand already. I just picked up this large pack here from Amazon. These are great if you're making a lot of different coasters or you can just use this as protective bottoms on vases or maybe a ceramic object that you just want to make sure doesn't scratch a surface. So I always like to have these on hand. I'll leave these linked down below as well and you can just cut them into any shape you like. These are self-adhesive, like I had mentioned, so I did take that paper off, but just to make sure that it really stayed on there, I did put some extra hot glue onto the coaster before I attached the cork bottom. Here is the final result. I am obsessed with these. I think that they are just so fun. They will definitely put a smile on anyone's face and you can use them as coasters, of course, or just as decor. And here, I just wanted to show you an example. You can even dress them up a little bit. So I just put a bow on the one bunny and then two little felt noses just to kind of give it some character. Next step is one of my favorites because it is so simple, but really cute. So I picked up these little bags at the Dollar Tree. They look like carrots, so they are just kind of snack bags or gift bags. And I'm actually just going to turn them into plush carrots. So I think that these are just so cool because they kind of did all of the work for you. All you have to do is stuff them with some polyfill, close those little drawstrings up, and then I just finished mine off with this carrot ribbon. So I did end up stuffing both of my carrots here. You get two in the one pack. And I wanted to show you two different options. So you can go with the longer bow or just a shorter one. And I actually kind of prefer this one because I think that print is just so adorable on that ribbon. So I might switch out my other carrot for the longer bow as well. Well, but these are great. You can put them by a little bunny pillow or just honestly anywhere for decor. I'm actually planning on just picking up more of these. That way I can create at least six of them and then putting them into a wicker basket for a really cute display. This next DIY is so simple that it's hard to even call it a DIY. And all you're going to need is some of these carrots from the Dollar Tree as well as some Dollar Tree twine. So it is super simple and quick, but the idea is to just take three of the carrots from the pack. Then you just want to take a long piece of twine, 
holds it in place and just wrap it around that bundle of carrots a few times until you have just enough to tie a little bow up the top. So like I said, so simple, but this could really be just kind of like a cute little add-on to another DIY or even for a tear tray. It's just something fun to add a cute element to an already existing DIY. I'm going to be using these plastic pastel eggs from the Dollar Tree. So once you open them up and you kind of pick them up out of the carton and turn them over, you'll see that there is a hole in the bottom. And this actually gave me an idea. So I figured if we could somehow put a hole in the top, we could use these as beads to kind of make a wood bead garland. So that is exactly what we are going to be doing. The easiest and safest way I found to do it is with a drill and a small drill bit. I'm sure there are definitely other ways, but this was just the one that I used. And if you do do this method, I definitely suggest leaving the eggs in that cardboard carton. It kind of just helps to keep your hands away from the drill while you are drilling into the egg. So it did not take much pressure. And then once I did pop through the egg, then I just stopped the drill and just pulled the egg right off of the drill bit. Now all six of my eggs have that hole in the top as well as the bottom. So I'm also going to be using some twine for this and you're also going to be needing some wood beads. So Dollar Tree does have these wood beads for this spring and Easter season. They are really pretty. You can absolutely use these for this DIY depending on how long you want yours to be. You could just use one or two. But I know that these are kind of hard to find. So another option is just to use some plain wood beads. These are just from Amazon. I will leave a link from them down below. They are pretty inexpensive. You get a bunch of them and I do use these for other crafts as well. So I do like to keep them on hand and I'm going to be using 35 of these beads today. I want to start off by making a loop on the end of my twine. That way when my garland is finished, it is really easy just to hang up on a hook or on a nail. So to do that, I'm just going to take my twine here and kind of just fold a bit of it over, make a loop around my finger. Then I'm going to take that loop and kind of just twist it around and pull it through to secure a knot. I really hope that that makes sense. It might just kind of be easier to see than it is to explain. Now that I have my loop secured, I'm just going to measure out how long I want my garland to be. And then I do like to give myself just a little bit extra of twine to kind of work with in case I have to just trim it at some point if it gets too frayed or if something like that happens, it's always easy just to give yourself a little bit of extra rope. And now I'm gonna show you a trick on how I got the eggs onto my strand here. So to do this, I'm just gonna be taking some painter's tape and I wanna make sure that it's longer than the egg itself. So then I'm gonna place my twine in the center of that tape and fold it over and try to make sure that the rope is all the way against the fold on the bottom. And you just want to just kind of press down as firmly as you can. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and you'll see that that rope is all the way at the edge. And I wanna trim as close to that rope as I can without actually hitting it because then it would just kind of cause the tape to open back up. And then you'll see that I did kind of cut a diagonal on the end there. So this is going to act as our makeshift needle while we are making our garland. Now we can start to add our beads. So I decided to put five beads in between each egg. And I'm gonna be starting off with five beads here and then adding one egg and then just continue continuing that pattern until I am all out of eggs. If this method does not work for you, you might want to switch to a thinner strand or rope. And you can definitely just even use a really tiny twine or even some thread if you double it up and it's some nice sturdy thread. And you can use a doll needle, which is much longer than a traditional needle, which will make the process a lot easier. But I had no issues using this kind of tape method here and it worked out really well in the end. Now I am just adding my last egg to my garland and then I'm going to finish it off with five more beads. And I'm going to be using that same method that I used to start off my strand and I'm just going to finish off my twine with that loop again. That way we can just hang it very easily. So here is my finished would be garland strand and like I said I'm going to be using this one to kind of hang up but if you wanted to just make this into a kind of a tabletop would be garland I think that would be really sweet as well. You can just make it a little bit shorter and add some tassels to the end. 
our next DIY is going to be a bunny rabbit centerpiece. So I'm going to be starting off with this wood shaped bunny cutout from Dollar Tree. They bring this one back every year and I think I usually come up with a new craft for it every year. The first thing I want to do though is just cover up that hole in the top ear from that piece of twine. We're not going to be hanging this up so we don't want to be seeing that big hole. I'm just using some of this lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree just to fill it in. Then you want to let it dry completely and then you can just sand it flat with a sanding block. I'm going to start with the back here and just make sure that it is nice and smooth just by going in some circular motions. I did notice that the back of this was a little rough also so I'm going to go ahead and just smooth that down as well. Sometimes the wood items from Dollar Tree can be a little rough so you might want to make sure to take a sanding block and just smooth it down before you start to paint. For the base of our centerpiece, I'm going to be using this oval wood cutout from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. And we're actually not going to be painting today. I wanted to try out something a little bit different. So this is home decor wax from Folk Art. You can find this on Amazon. I'll be sure to leave it linked down below. And I like to use this in place of stain. And since we do have wood items, I wanted to kind of go with a different look today and try to kind of have that stained look. That way you could see a little bit of the wood grain peeking out. I like to use this because I'm not great when it comes to regular wood stain. So this is just a little bit more crafter friendly if you don't wood stain a lot. And I do have gloves on here. So if you're going to be doing this at home, just be sure to put some gloves on. And I'm working on a piece of parchment paper just to keep my crafting mat nice and clean. But there is no smell whatsoever with this. It kind of goes on like a paint. You can just put it on your wood service and take a paper towel and just kind of buff it in and wipe off any excess. Then I just let it dry completely for a few hours. It says you can leave it overnight, but mine was honestly dry in about three or four hours. So now I'm going to start attaching my bunny to my base. And to do that, I'm going to be using these little tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. I didn't stain these only because we're not going to be seeing them in the final project. I'm going to be using two of the blocks and what I'm going to do is just hot glue one to each side of the bunny rabbit on his back feet and that is just going to be giving us a larger area to add some glue to add to our base without adding these side pieces the bunny itself is pretty thin and it would be hard to basically get it to stand upright on our wood base without toppling over and now is the really fun part we get to decorate the base of our bunny the first thing I want to do is just put down some of the Spanish moss and I did pick this up at Dollar Tree and I can usually find it in their floral department. So I'm just going to be attaching it to the base with some hot glue. So I put some on the front and then I added some to the back as well. Craft is so customizable. You could just skip this dark wood stain and paint it instead. I think a bright white would look beautiful or maybe even some pastel colors. I think lilac would be a really nice one as well. I'm going to be adding in some faux florals on top of the moss and I am going to use my wire cutters just to easily trim down all of those flowers and make them a little bit easier to add into the moss. For these purple flowers here, they did have a long enough stem that I could kind of just nestle them in, but for my green leaves, I did end up having to hot glue them on top of the moss. I did pick up two faux floral picks, but I ended up just using one of them. And I put all the purple flowers in the front and in the back, I just added some of the green leaves. And now for the final step, I'm going to be taking this pack of plastic pastel eggs from Dollar Tree and just adding them all around. So in the front here, I kept it a little bit lighter. I added the pink, purple, and white egg. And to attach them, I'm just using hot glue again. And in the back, I put the teal, blue, and yellow. I was actually thinking about picking up a second pack and just sticking with those front colors since I do think that they match a little bit better with the flowers. But here is how it turned out. I think that this craft would be great as a centerpiece on a table. When I saw these bunny Easter eggs at Dollar Tree, I knew we had to come up with a fun DIY for them. The shape is great. I don't love the color so much, but that is okay. It is an easy fix. 
One of the things I really liked about this item was that the feet on the bottom allow it to stand up all on its own. And we are going to be transforming these with some spray paint. It really is one of the easiest ways to really transform an item. And it is amazing what one coat of paint can do. So for these, they are two pieces because they are an Easter egg. So before you paint them, you might want to hot glue the two pieces together. I didn't because I figured the paint would be enough just to keep them together. And I didn't have any issues, but you might want to glue them beforehand just to make sure. And this is the spray paint I'm going to be using. I will leave this one linked down below. It has a beautiful satin finish to it that really just adds to the high-end look. And it is a bit of an off-white color, so it has a really nice warm tone to it. So next, we just have to cover up that line in the middle of our rabbit. And I am going to be using some twine to cover that up. You can absolutely use ribbon as well, but I figured twine would kind of go with the look of all of our other crafts and it would keep that neutral look intact. So I'm just holding a piece of twine in the front of the bunny and then I'm going to wrap it around three times and then just cut it and tie it into a bow. I did want to mention that when I was spray painting the eggs, I did work in really light coats. So instead of just doing one big coat, I did about three, I would say, but it's only because I would just spray paint a really light coat first, let it dry about 20 or 30 minutes and then do another coat on top just to make sure the paint looked nice and even. So now we're going to be adding a tail. And Dollar Tree actually had this pom-pom kit where you can make little bunny rabbits, but they had a ton of different sizes of pom-poms in the kit that I thought would be perfect for our bunny here. They do also sell those large pom-pom tails at Dollar Tree, but those are a little bit too large for this craft. And I couldn't decide at first which one of these to use. There was a small, medium, and large in this pack. And I was going to go with a really big one, but I figured that the medium tail would be best. So that's what this one is here. And to attach it to our bunny, I'm just using some hot glue. And here is how they turned out. This one is just so sweet. I love the look of the bunny. I think the tail is so cute, but it definitely has that neutral Easter feel to it. Next, we have a really easy two minute DIY. It's actually more of just a way to style these plush carrots from Dollar Tree. So if you guys did pick these up, I have a really simple way to display them and a free printable. So I picked up this small galvanized bucket from Dollar Tree in their floral department, but you you don't need this one any small galvanized bucket would do or even one of their plastic buckets and I did create this free printable so I'm gonna leave my blog link down below this is my blog here when you click on that link it's gonna bring you right here to this article all you want to do is just scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says free printable and you're going to have two options. So this is the first one here. It says Cottontail Farms and it has the carrots with the fresh carrot sign underneath. And then the second one you can click on just says carrot patch open daily. You can just pick out your favorite one and print it out. I'm going to be going with the Cottontail Farms one here and I did print this out on cardstock. That way it's just a little bit thicker and easier to work with. And I'm going to be attaching it to my bucket with this carrot ribbon from Dollar Tree. I just think it's really cute and it fits in perfectly with our theme. So I'm going to be going with the top size here. That is the medium one. So it goes medium, large, and small. And medium seems to fit best for this size bucket here. Then I just took my ribbon and measured it around my bucket just to make sure it was going to be long enough before I cut it. And to attach it, I'm just going to be using hot glue. But again, I did print this out on cardstock so it can hold up to hot glue. But if you use regular printer paper, I would just use a glue stick. And now I'm just going to tie the ribbon around my bucket. It's a really easy way to decorate a bucket. And that way, if you want to use it for something else, you can just take the ribbon off and it doesn't ruin the bucket at all for for a future DIY. And now you can just add your carrots to the top. This bucket can fit six carrots, but five works really well. 
and here is how it turned out. I'm going to be starting off with these two wooden bunny signs from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to be cutting off that twine up top. We're not going to need it and I want to fill in those holes. So to do that, I'm just going to be using some of this lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree. So I just take a bit of a glob of it, fill it into the hole, let it dry completely. And then I just take a sanding block and just sand it smooth. So now I have to paint my bunnies here. So I'm going to be using spray paint. It's super quick and easy. You can definitely just paint them by hand with some white chalk paint or white acrylic paint. So here they are all painted. And now we are going to assemble these into a 3D bunny. So to do that, I'm going to be using some of these tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. These are so great to have on hand for crafting. They come in really handy. So I'm going to be using four of them. And what I did here was just hot glue two of them together. And then I repeated that same process for the other two. And now I'm just going to hot glue it into the center of the first bunny. And now it kind of has a little raised support area to hold up our second rabbit. So now I'm just gonna put a little bit more hot glue and then just sandwich my second one on top. So this will kind of give it that 3D effect and allow it to stand up all on its own. Before the hot glue sets though, you do wanna stand it up and make sure that all the feet are level before it sets completely. So now we have the base and we get to decorate, which is of course the most fun part. So I'm going to start off with this burlap ribbon that I found in the floral department at the Dollar Tree. So I just cut a nice long piece and I'm just going to tie a big bow around the neck. I think it looks really sweet and honestly, if you wanted to stop here, I think it looks really great. But I wanted to just make it super spring inspired, so I am going to be adding some faux florals. So I picked up these two and you don't even have to cut them, you can just kind of carefully pull the head right off of the stem. Them. And now to attach them around the collar, I'm just going to be adding a little bit of hot glue. I decided to just add three to the front, so two purple and one pink, but you can definitely keep this design going all the way around the collar and finish off the back side as well. Now the last thing I wanted to do was just kind of paint some of the elements on the bunny. So I'm going to just paint the tail with this white chalk paint. So the bunny is of course already white, but this is a slightly different shade. So it does help the tail kind of just pop a little bit more, but I think it would be really sweet if you wanted to paint this light pink as well. And I actually am going to be painting the inside of the ears with a light pink. And I just mixed a little bit of this pink color here with some white chalk paint to achieve this color. The inside portion of the ears is actually raised, so it makes painting it super easy. And here is a look on how it turned out. This bunny is definitely ready for spring and I just love how large this Dollar Tree DIY is. It's a very substantial decoration. For this next DIY, I'm going to be using this wood piece that I found in the crafter square at the Dollar Tree. So on the back, it's referred to as a breadboard. So it kind of looks like a mini cutting board. And to get started, I just need to paint it white. So you can paint it by hand or you can just spray paint it. I'm going to be spray painting mine, but another great option is this white chalk paint. I'll leave both of these linked down below in the description box. So here is my wood piece after it was completely painted. And now I'm going to grab my free printable. So this one is linked down below in the description box. It's on my blog. You can print it out completely for free. And I did print mine out on cardstock. So now I'm just taking that picture and just placing it over the wood piece. So basically I kind of just want to make sure that I have it centered and that all of the words are going to fit on the board. And once I can kind of tell that they were, I just use my fingertips to just make some lines around the paper. That way I knew exactly where to cut. If you don't want to do this, you can just also take the wood piece and place it over the image and just trace it out with a pencil. And that way you can just cut along the lines. And now to attach it, I'm just going to be using a glue stick. If you're just going to be using this for decorative use and just placing it on a tiered tray or a shelf somewhere, it should be fine just like this. But you do have the option to seal in the image if you like. So I'm going to be doing that here with some Mod Podge that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. But I do kind of have some issues with the Mod Podge. Sometimes when you paint it over a picture that you've printed out, it can cause the ink to run a little bit and make it look a little muddy. So if you're not going to be kind of playing with it too much and you did print it out on cardstock, you might not have to seal it in place. If you do seal it in place, just be careful. Go over that image really lightly. So here it is all dry and now I'm just going to add my accessories and keeping with our theme, I'm going to be using those same carrots that I've been using throughout this entire video. 
as well as some more of that carrot ribbon. So I just cut a nice long piece of that ribbon out and I'm going to be tying it into a bow right around the handle of our mini board here. And then I'm just going to trim off the edges and then finally hot glue one of those carrots right into the middle of the bow. And here is how it turned out. This one is perfect for a tear tray because it is just so cute and tiny, but I think this would be really fun on a kitchen windowsill as well. Cool. All you need to get started are two of these wood bunny heads from the Dollar Tree. These are really cute and I could not wait to DIY them. So to start off, I'm just going to be taking my favorite chalk paint. I'll leave it linked down below in the description box. It's just from Amazon, but I absolutely love it. And I'm going to be painting just the top portion of these bunnies. So we're going to leave those sides completely exposed. And now we're going to add a little bit of detail. So to make the pink color here, I just mix some dark pink with that same white chalk paint just to get a nice matte color. And I'm just going to go in and paint some ovals just to add some details to the ears. And then I'm also going to be painting a little triangle for the nose. I'm just going to let these dry completely and then I'm going to be using a fine tip marker to create the last details. So you can absolutely paint this but it is a little bit tricky for me personally to add those really fine details with a paintbrush. So a marker comes in really handy. If I can find this marker I'll leave it linked down below. I believe it is just from Michaels. So I just added some curves for the eyes and then some whiskers and then I'm just going to add a little mouth coming down from the nose and I am going to be creating a little boy bunny as well as a girl bunny. So for the girl bunny I just recreated the same exact face but I did give her some eyelashes. Now for the final step, I'm going to be adding in some of this carrot ribbon from the Dollar Tree. You guys might remember this ribbon from my last video. I absolutely fell in love with it and I did go ahead and pick up another roll of it. So for the boy bunny, I just took a nice long piece of ribbon. I tied it into a bow and then I just hot glued it right by his neck and now I'm just going to be trimming those edges. And then for the girl bunny, I just cut a nice long piece again and decided to tie it around one of her ears into a bow. And that is going to be it for this first DIY. Really simple, but how cute is this pair of bunnies? I absolutely love them. For this next DIY, I'm going to be starting with this box that I found in the crafter square at the Dollar Tree. And I'm also going to be using some of these wood bunny ornaments from the Dollar Tree. So these ones come in a pack of eight. I'm just going to be using four today. I usually have these boxes in the crafter square year round and sometimes you will see a different image on the front. This one just has a llama. The image doesn't really matter because I'm actually not going to be using the top of this box at all. So I'm going to be making a floral box and you could reuse the lid and just kind of put it underneath and even hot glue it to it if you wanted to give your box a nice base. but. I opted to just not use it. So I'm going to go ahead and just spray paint my box first with this white spray paint. You could just paint it with some white acrylic paint or white chalk paint, but I do love how quick and easy spray paint is. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a coat. And while that's drying, I'm just going to prep my bunnies. So to do that, I want to fill in the hole on the top of the bunny and it's really easy. All you have to do is just get some lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree take a little bit on your finger and just fill in that hole. Then you want to just wait till it is completely dry and then take a sanding block and just sand it smooth. Now that I have all four of my bunnies prepped, I'm going to go ahead and spray paint them with this French lilac color. You might remember this one from some of my previous videos. This is one of my favorite colors to use for spring. It is just so beautiful and I will leave it linked down below. I usually pick this one up at Walmart. And here is how everything turned out once I had it spray painted and dry. So now I'm going to get started on assembling my box. And to do that, I'm just going to be taking my bunnies here and hot gluing one to each side of the box. So you'll see that they actually fit perfectly from tail to nose there. So I was really happy about that. I was a little worried they might be a little bit too big, but 
in the end it definitely worked out great and now I just want to add one of these foam floral blocks to the center so you can usually find this in the floral department at the Dollar Tree so they come in a pack of four and one of them fits really good inside this box here so I just added a little bit of hot glue and now the last step is just to add a flower of your choice Dollar Tree has so many beautiful flowers to choose from for the spring I decided to go with these pink daisies and now I just had to measure how long I wanted them to be so I like to start my cut off with my scissors just to kind of break the plastic portion and then if you just bend it back and forth it will break that wire really easily so now I'm just going to be adding all six of my daisies to my box and that is it for this DIY and here is a closer look on how it turned out I think this one would look so beautiful with some faux tulips as well Next up is going to be a one minute DIY. So I'm gonna be starting off with this frame from the Dollar Tree. You can usually find this one either in the decor department or sometimes by the other photo frames. They kind of move it around a little bit depending on the store, but I really, really love this one for the price. So once you have that, all you need is one of these free printables. So these are gonna be on my blog. I will leave that link down below in the description box. So I have four different designs to choose from and they're all kind of just themed around spring and Easter. So you're gonna have the Hello Spring one on the top here, as well as this carrot one, or I have a blue Easter egg hunt version, as well as a hoppy Easter, which is just kind of funny and cute. So here is my blog. This is what it's gonna look like when you click that link in the description box. You just wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then it's gonna say free printable. And if you just click on the highlighted portion, this will pop up and you can just print it at home on your computer. So I like to print mine on cardstock. It's just kind of sturdier, but you could get away with just printing it on regular computer paper as well. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut one of them out and they are sized perfectly for this frame. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover up that image that says happily ever after. If you do print it out on computer paper, you might wanna use the back of the cardboard so that image does not poke through, but I did print it on cardstock, so I had no issues with that. And here it is once it was framed. You can definitely hang this one up by that little handle, but it also does stand all on its own, so it makes this DIY perfect for a tiered tray. For this next DIY, I'm going to be using these craft eggs from the Dollar Tree. So you get six of these foam craft eggs in one pack, and I actually wish I had picked up two packs because I absolutely loved the finished result of this DIY. So we're actually going to be painting these today, but we are going to be using the baking soda painting method. So I have my baking soda here, and I actually did pick this up at the Dollar Tree. And then something else you're gonna see me use are these foam floral blocks. So you do not need these for this DIY, but they do make the process a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I'm gonna do that. So basically these are just foam, so you can stick a toothpick into the bottom of them and then just use the foam floral block as a support just to kind of help you stay a little bit more neat and organized while you are painting and letting your eggs dry. So now I'm gonna be using three disposable cups because I'm going to be mixing three different colors. I'm only saying disposable because I don't want you to use something that you're gonna be eating out of, but you can definitely just rinse these cups out when you're all done and use it for a future craft. You don't have to throw them away. So I like to start off with just a base acrylic white in each of the cups, and then I'm gonna be adding in the color that I want my finished eggs to be. So I'm gonna be adding some purple, and then some pink, and finally some yellow to my cups. And the last step is just to add in some baking soda. So I like to go in with just a little bit first. You can always add more if you want to basically make your consistency a little bit thicker or a bit grittier. So the consistency that I'm going for here is kind of like a toothpaste. So you'll see it's a little bit thick, kind of gritty, but it works really well. So if you use less baking soda, you're just gonna have a bit more of a watery consistency, more similar to paint. So I'm just going to be painting my eggs here, and I did decide to do two coats on each egg, and here is how they turned out. So you'll see that my baking soda paint was a little bit more thick, so it does give you a really nice kind of stone look to your eggs, 
and it has a really nice texture to the overall appearance. Now I'm just going to remove those toothpicks and that is it. You are done. So I just decided to add these to a bowl that I had created. This is an old Dollar Tree DIY actually. And I think that they turned out so pretty, so vibrant, and I just really, really enjoyed baking soda painting. So for this next DIY, I'm going to get started with this large wood egg sign. So I actually want to turn this into more of just a decor piece and not a sign. So I want to fill in those holes. So to do that, I'm just using that same method that I used earlier. I just filled it in with some lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to wait for it to dry and sand it smooth. And now I want to just give this entire carrot one coat of this white spray paint before I get started on painting the details. So for the raised portion of the carrot, which is the stem, I'm going to be mixing some of this white chalk paint with a dark green color. I just wanted to kind of have a sage green color and really have that matte appearance of chalk paint. And now I want to add in some orange stripes. So I did go ahead and just add a little bit of some orange to that same white chalk paint to create a bit of a lighter orange color. And now I'm going to be taking some painter's tape and just making some stripes along my carrot and then I want to go ahead and just paint those exposed areas. Now I'm just going to let this dry completely and then it is time for my absolute favorite part which is removing that tape. This part is always so much fun and you could definitely just stop here. If you wanted to just use this as a decor piece, you could just prop it up against some books or maybe in a display cabinet. Just put it against something and it will stand up, but I wanted to have the option to have it stand up all on its own without kind of leaning it against something. So a good option for that is just to add some supports in the back. So to do that, I'm just going to be using two of these wood cubes that I found at the Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square. And here is a closer look at the final result. I really love the look of the stripes on this carrot and I think it gives it a fun and an unexpected look. For this next DIY, I'm going to be transforming these wood pieces from the Dollar Tree with some window clings. So the pieces I chose for this are this wood tray that I found in the crafter square. And then I also chose these three wooden eggs that I found in the crafting area for Easter at the Dollar Tree. And these are the window clings that I'm going to be using for this DIY. As soon as I saw these, I knew that I loved them and I wanted to use them in something. So these two larger ones here, the one that says Happy Easter and the truck, are going to be too large for these DIYs. So I'm going to either save them for a future DIY or I just want to use them as window clings because they're so cute. But for the eggs, I'm actually going to use the three little chicks. And then for the tray, I decided to use just these little flowers here to kind of just give it a really fun spring look. So I'm going to get started on my eggs first and these are similar to those egg bunny heads which we did earlier in the video. So I'm going to be using that same exact chalk paint and just painting them using the same method. A foam brush works really well for this so I always have these on hand. You can find these in the crafter square at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to be giving the top of the egg one coat of that white chalk paint and leaving the sides of the egg exposed with that natural wood. For the tray, I definitely could have just used that same white chalk paint. This would work just as well to cover this entire tray. But since this one was a little bit of an odd shape, I thought it might be easier to just spray paint it. So that is the option that I'm going to go for today. I'm just going to be using that same white spray paint that I used earlier in the video. This is one of my favorite spray paints. It's really user friendly. I love the matte look that it gives. So I'm just going to go ahead and give that tray one coat of that. So now while that tray is drying, I'm going to get started on my eggs. So I'm going to be using these three little chicks here. And before I kind of just set them permanently, I just wanted to make sure that they were going to fit and they definitely fit nicely. So once I had them kind of laid out exactly where I wanted them, I grabbed my Mod Podge. You can find Mod Podge at the Dollar Tree. They usually have gloss as well as matte. This is the gloss version. And I just put some Mod Podge down on the egg first. That way the little chick window cling had something to stick onto. And then once I had it in place, I just put one coat of that Mod Podge on top of it just to seal it in place. And then I repeated that same process for my other eggs. So here they are once they were all dry. And I did want these to be able to stand up on their own. You could just prop these up against something as well or just kind of lay them flat. 
but if you want them to stand up on their own, you can just add a little wood support in the back. So you can use either the tumbling tower blocks or these little wood cubes from the crafter square. So that's what I'm going to be using today. And all you have to do is just add some hot glue to the back. Next, I'm going to get started on my tray. So here it was after I had let it dry completely from that spray paint. And now I'm just going to be taking off the flowers from the window clings and just kind of placing them where I want them to be and just kind of moving them around until I had it just right. And now that I have them where I want them to be, I'm just going to go ahead, peel them up one at a time, add some Mod Podge underneath and then just place them back down. And then once I had all of them glued down with the Mod Podge, I did do one final coat over everything to seal it in place. And here is a closer look on how everything turned out. For this next DIY, I'm going to be using these wood carrot ornaments from the Dollar Tree as well as this wood oval that I found in the crafter square at the Dollar Tree. So when I saw it, I was just kind of drawn to it because it was a really nice piece of wood and I knew I wanted to create something with it. So to get started, I'm just going to be using that same spray paint as earlier and giving it one coat. While that is drying, I'm going to get started with my carrots and I have to prep them first. So like before, I do want to cover up that hole on top. So to do that, I'm just going to be doing the same exact method of just putting that lightweight spackling into the hole, letting it dry completely, and then just taking a sanding block to just sand it smooth. So once I had all three of my carrots fully smoothed and prepped, I'm just going to get started with painting. So to paint them, I just mix that same white chalk paint that you guys have seen throughout this entire video with some orange paint. And the reason is I wanted to kind of just give it a really nice muted look and have that matte appearance of the white chalk paint. And this is a really great hack. So if you love the look of chalk paint, but you don't want to buy it in every color, you can just mix a little bit of acrylic paint in any color you like into some white chalk paint as your base, and it will give you that same appearance. Once I let my carrots dry, I decided just to add some really fun details with some dark brown paint and one of my foam brushes and I just dipped just the edge in and just made some lines going across the carrot just to give it some definition. Now that everything is dry, I'm going to get started on assembling my sign. So this is how my oval turned out once I had it spray painted. And when I'm adding my carrots to my sign, I want to give them some dimension. So to do that, I'm going to be using four of these tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. So for two of my carrots, I'm just going to be hot gluing one of the blocks onto the back of it. And then for my third carrot, I actually stacked two of the tumbling towers together just to make this one a little bit taller since it's going to be the center carrot. Now to glue them to my sign, I'm just going to start off with my two side carrots. So those are the two pieces with just the one block glued on the back. And I'm just going to hot glue them to the two sides. And then for my third carrot, this is the tallest one with the two tumbling tower blocks on the back. I'm just going to be hot gluing that one in the center to really make it pop. And for the final step, I'm just going to be hot gluing two of these wood cubes onto the back just to act as supports so the sign can stand up all on its own. This sign is a pretty good size, but I do think it is small enough to still fit into many tier trays if you wanted to make this for a tier tray display. Before we jump into the craft, I just wanted to go over the items that I'm going to be using from Dollar Tree. So the first item here is this mop head, and they actually have another version of this that I've used in my previous gnomes. It's kind of just a more plain version, a white cotton one, but this one was just so interesting looking and I thought it would be fun and different to use. So this is what I'm going to be using to create the beard for the gnome today. And since we are creating an Easter bunny gnome, I of course had to pick up these ears. So these ones are going to work perfectly for this gnome. I was a little nervous if they were going to be too large, but honestly, they look great. And I also picked up these little bunny feet to go with them. And I did want to mention they do carry the ears as well as these feet in a blue version as well. So if you are more into the blue shades, you might want to pick those ones up. And then you're also going to need a pair of socks. So Dollar Tree does have a bunch of socks, but I didn't really see any Easter ones this year. So I did go ahead and just pick these up at the Christmas tree shop. They were around a dollar or so, and they did have a bunch of different patterns that were really cute, but you can also just use a pastel version of socks. They don't need to have a print on it, but I thought that these ones would look really cute for this craft today. 
I'm also going to be using some of these table tennis balls from the Dollar Tree, but I know that these ones can be a little tricky to find, so I'm going to leave this other one linked down below. These are just from Walmart and they are very inexpensive as well. And finally, I'm just going to be using these carrots as an accessory and you can pick up any accessories you like. I like to go pretty simple, but I thought the carrots would be perfect. So to start off, you just want to grab your socks and we only need one to start off with. So we're going to put that second one to the side just for now. And now with my sock, I want to weigh down the bottom of the body of my gnome. That way he can just stand upright. So to do this, my favorite thing is to use these poly pellets. They are little plastic pellets and they come in so handy. I'll leave them linked down below. But if you want to use something from the Dollar Tree, these glass pebbles are great. Or you can also use some of these little white stones. Anything to kind of just weigh down the bottom will work. After you weigh down the bottom of your sock, you want to start to stuff it. So to stuff my sock today, I'm going to be using some polyfill. This one I believe is from Amazon. They have polyfill at any craft store or Walmart. I'll leave some options linked down below. So I filled mine up all the way up to that heel portion. And now just to tie it off, I'm using a rubber band. Could also use some string, but I find that a rubber band is really easy. And now I just want to cut off that extra sock. So here is the base of my gnome. This is going to be his body. Next up, I just want to grab my mop because I want to attach the beard. So here is a photo of the other mop that Dollar Tree offers, the white mop. But I thought that this one would be fun. Either will work for this craft. So once you take your mop out, you're going to notice that there is a plastic piece that's basically separating the two sides. And you only need one side for each gnome so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off those strands and then save the other side for another future craft so you'll see those cut ends are basically going to be the bottom of the beard and the other side those ones are all still attached so they're just looped over that's just the style of the mop so that one is going to be the top part where you're not going to see it so I just took a rubber band just to secure all of those strands together and now to attach it to the body, I'm just going to be taking a third rubber band and just wrapping that around both of those to tie them together. You could also just hot glue the beard to the body as well. I have done that in the past, but the rubber band method did work really well. So now I'm just going to take two of the table tennis balls and put one to the side. We don't need to do anything to that one for now. But this second table tennis ball is going to be the nose of the gnome. And I want to paint it just to warm up the color a little bit. I'm just going to quickly show you my method for painting it to make it super simple. But any way you paint it is totally fine. I just like to pierce mine with a toothpick and then just push it into a foam floral block. That way it makes it super easy to paint and dry. And for the color today, I'm just going to be mixing some of this white chalk paint with a little bit of this orange spice color. And now that I have my paint all mixed, I'm just going to go ahead and paint that table tennis ball and then let it dry completely. Once it was all dry, I just removed the toothpick and now to attach it to my gnome, I'm just going to be using some hot glue. So for this, I like to make sure that there are some beard strands behind the nose as well as on the sides of the nose just to kind of help frame it out. And now you can grab that second sock as well as that second table tennis ball. And I like to just put it all the way to the bottom by the toes of the sock and then tie it off with a rubber band or some string. Since I used a rubber band for this, I'm just going to be taking some yarn and wrapping it around that rubber band just to hide it so it looks a little bit more finished. Adding that second table tennis ball to the sock just gives the appearance of a pom pom on top. And now I'm just going to be stretching my sock to put the hat on my gnome. You just want to make sure that the heel of the sock is facing towards the back. And then you can just take your time to kind of have your hat sit however you like. I like to pull the back down pretty far. And then for the front of the hat, I kind of like it to cover half of the nose. That way just the bottom half is peeking out. And now I just want to trim up my beard to make sure that everything is nice and neat. And I kind of like to trim it in a bit of a U shape. And now it is time for my favorite part, adding the accessories. So if you wanted to keep your gnome pretty simple and kind of just do a spring themed gnome, you don't have to turn it into a bunny. You can just add something simple like a carrot or an Easter egg and then just stop right here. And I think this one looks super cute just like this. 
but I definitely wanted to add all of the accessories and turn this one into a bunny. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab the ears as well as the feet. So for the ears, I do need to cut them off from that headband and they do have a hard plastic piece in the middle and that is pretty difficult to cut. So all you have to do is just actually cut the fabric right around the ear and that way you don't have to cut that middle plastic piece at all. And here are my two ears removed from the headband and now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those feet off. So I decided to cut it kind of right where the fabric meets that faux fur and there is a piece of foam in the middle as well as a metal wire but once you go ahead and kind of just cut through the foam, you can just pull that wire right out. To prep my ears, I just decided to kind of just pull them straight. There was a little bit of glue on the bottom and I wanted to clean up that other glue that was already there. So I did trim off the bottom portion just a little bit and then I put a line of hot glue right across the bottom and then kind of pinched them together. So this is gonna give you a really nice flat surface to put some hot glue on just so you can attach it to the gnome hat. Here was my gnome once I had those ears glued on, but they're looking a little bit floppy, which I think can look really cute. But if you want your ears to stand upright, you can just add a little bit of hot glue to the side of the ear and just glue it to the hat, and that way they will be nice and perky. And now I just have to hot glue those feet to the bottom of my gnome. So you'll see here that there is a little bit of that foam left over. And what happened to me was, the hot glue actually melted the foam. So I would just say remove that foam completely and you can just trim the feet a little bit smaller. The foam does not go all the way through. Or what I decided to do was just take a little bit of polyfill, fill in that gap and then hot glue it to my gnome. And at this point, I thought I was done until I realized I cannot make an Easter bunny gnome and not attach a little bunny tail. So I had an idea and I remembered that I did have these large pom-poms from the Dollar Tree. These are actually leftover snowballs from Christmas time. So I figured that this was the perfect time to use them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hot glue one to the back of my gnome. But Dollar Tree does have these pom-poms right now in their stores. These ones are specifically for Easter. They have a little bunny on the front of them. So I think that they are meant to be kind of Easter bunny tails for crafts. So definitely pick those up if you see them. I think they're a little bit smaller than the snowball, but they will work just as well. And here is a closer look on how the final gnome turned out. I'm pretty sure that I have created a gnome for almost every holiday. And this one is actually my favorite. I just love the little bunny ears and the bunny tail. I think that they are just so adorable and there's no way you can't smile every time you see this one. Next step, we are going to be completely changing the look of this craft bunny from the Dollar Tree. So when I saw this, I knew I wanted to do something with it. He's a really, really cute bunny and a really good size. So I have a piece of parchment paper here that I'm gonna be working on just to keep everything nice and neat. And we are actually going to be painting him with some baking soda paint. So it's gonna give us a really interesting texture and it's going to make the styrofoam super easy to paint. So I have a disposable cup here. This is just kind of to help the cleanup process. And I want it mine to kind of look like cement. So I'm using a gray base paint. And then all you have to do is just scoop some baking soda into the cup and mix it into the paint. And then I decided just to add a little bit of white acrylic paint just to kind of lighten it up a little bit and really give me that cement color. So after you mix in the baking soda into the paint, it's going to give it a really gritty consistency, almost like toothpaste, and it makes it really easy to paint onto the styrofoam. It just sticks really well. So I'm just taking a big paintbrush here and just giving the bunny one even coat. So after it dried, I decided to take some more paint and just kind of fill in certain sections. I didn't do a whole second coat. I wanted to kind of build up certain areas just to give it kind of more dimension and texture and make it look like it's actually cement. So here is how it turned out and it has a really, really good texture to it when you touch it and pick it up as well. And now we just have to decorate it. So to do this, I'm gonna keep it really simple. We're just gonna tie a little bow around the neck. I picked up this purple gingham ribbon at the Dollar Tree in their Easter department. And now I'm going to take some faux florals. These are mini baby's breath. And I'm just going to be cutting off about five of them and then hot gluing them around the collar. 
And here is a look at the finished result. I think this one's precious and baking soda paint is just so much fun. If I didn't mention it, you can pick up baking soda at the Dollar Tree in their kitchen department. For this next DIY, I'm going to be using these two rustic photo frames that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, but really any kind of photo frame will work for this one. And I'm also going to be using this Crafter Square cork board, as well as some more of those wood ornaments. The first thing I'm going to do is just cut that cork board right in half. So if you do happen to pick up these picture frames, this cork board will split in half perfectly and fit into this frame. So once you have it cut in half, you can just place it over the glass and then reframe everything back into that photo frame and just close down the tab. And I just repeated that same process for my second one. And now for my bunny and my little chick here, I'm just going to be using some craft paper and just tracing out my image and then cutting it out. Then I repeated that same process for my bunny. And now to attach the paper to the wood cutout, I'm just going to be using some glue from a glue stick. And it does adhere pretty well with the glue stick. Just make sure you get all of those edges. And now to seal everything in place, I'm going to be coating it with some matte Mod Podge. After you do an even coat, you just want to make sure to let them dry completely. And now I'm just going to hot glue one of them into the center of each of my photo frames. And here is how they turned out. I love these. I think they do have that really rustic feel to them. So one of my favorite hacks for the holidays is to grab a couple of these vases at Dollar Tree and some of their window clings. So if you guys have not seen me do this before, you can add any window cling that you like to the outside of a vase and it will just turn it into the perfect decor for any holiday. And you can also use it as a candle holder, but I would recommend faux candles since these are plastic and they would get really hot on the glass. Something else I was pleasantly surprised with was to see that the window clings for Easter at Dollar Tree came in a two pack. So I got both of these here for $1.25. And all you have to do to add them on is just take them off and they will stick right to the glass. Having any issues with having them adhere, you can just add a little bit of water to your vase first and then they will stick. But I've never had any issue. I always just apply them right to the glass and they stick on until I peel them off. And the best part about this is when the holiday is done or the season is over, you can just take them off and you still have your glass vase and you can reuse it for another holiday. Here's how mine turned out. And these make great vases, or you can even add some branches to these and then just add some eggs to those branches. But what I like to do is just take some of the LED candles from Dollar Tree and add them in. Perfect for last minute table decor if you're having an Easter brunch. We are going to be giving these Dollar Tree candles a major upgrade. So these are just the faux candles that they have in the Dollar Department. I love them. I think they're really great. But we are going to be embellishing them a little bit for Easter. And all you're going to need is some of that same burlap ribbon that we used for the carrot wreath and these wood bunnies from Dollar Tree. So to start off with, you're just gonna take your ribbon and wrap it around one of those candles, and you wanna make sure it just overlaps a little bit. Then go ahead and cut it, and then I just hot glued mine in place. You can just actually hot glue the ribbon to itself if you don't want to kind of ruin your candle, if you're looking to save this candle for another event. But I just went ahead and hot glued it all together since I figured I could use these year after year for Easter. So once my ribbon was in place, I just took some more hot glue, put it on the front and added on my wood bunny. And that is it. This DIY could not get easier, but it is a really fun DIY if you are looking for some Easter decor really quickly. Maybe you're planning a brunch or you're going to have people over for Easter dinner and these would look absolutely perfect on a table. But I do have another DIY next that goes great with them. For this DIY, I'm going to be using four of these wooden egg shapes from Dollar Tree. Now this DIY is not one that I invented. I actually haven't seen it done with this shape before, but this DIY is all over Pinterest. You have probably seen it before but I wanted to show you how you could recreate it using all Dollar Tree products. So I'm going to be using those wood eggs, some of the pastel eggs from Dollar Tree and some wooden dowels, but don't worry. I'm going to show you those again later on in the video. But first I want to go ahead and just spray paint these and any color would work, 
but this French lilac color from Rust-Oleum is one of my favorites for Easter. I will leave it linked down below. So I went ahead and spray painted them on the front and the back and let them dry completely. Now I'm going to take two of my wooden eggs and just mark off where the center is on the top of them. So I just measured and for the top, it was about at the two and a half inch mark and I just marked it with my pencil. And now for the other two, I'm going to go ahead and just flip them over to the back and measure where the center of that one is. So this is where we are going to be making the hole for the dowel. The dowels that I'm going to be using are from Dollar Tree in the crafter square. They do have a couple of different ones. I liked these ones here because they are longer and that way I can customize the size by just cutting them later on to the height that I need. And I'm also going to be using this pack of pastel eggs and we do have to make some holes. So you want to make sure when you have your drill that your drill bit is the same size as the wooden dowel that you're going to be inserting into the hole. And you do want to make sure do not go all the way through just about halfway through that way your wood dowel can easily fit into that hole. I'm going to be using that same size drill bit to drill a hole on the top and bottom of my plastic egg. So I just want to make sure that it is big enough for my wooden dowel to fit through. And you will see that these plastic eggs already do have a hole on the bottom, but for me, it was too small for my wooden dowel. So depending on which size wooden dowel you use, you might be able to use that hole in the bottom and just drill a hole on top, but it really just does depend on the size of your wooden dowel. And I do like to keep mine in the container when I am drilling a hole on the top and bottom, but please be careful when you are doing this step. So after I drilled them all, I just put each one on my wooden dowel to make sure that it could fit comfortably. Now, before I go ahead and trim down my wooden dowel to size, I just want to measure it first. So before I glued anything, I just put it into the base wooden egg, added two of my plastic eggs on top, and now I'm just going to go ahead and take my pencil and mark off about a quarter inch above the top egg, the, the part of the wooden dowel that gets glued into the top wooden egg. So now that I know where I need to cut, I'm just going to go ahead and take everything apart and that is where I'm going to trim it down. Now we can start to assemble everything. So you can use wood glue for this, but since I already knew I was just going to be using flameless candles on here, which I do recommend, I really recommend only using flameless candles for this DIY. But since I did know that and I already had my hot glue gun out, I decided to just assemble everything on mine with my hot glue gun and everything was nice and sturdy. So first I hot glued my wooden dowel. Next, I added my first egg, now my second egg, and then of course some hot glue will be added to the top wooden egg. That way we can finish off this candle holder. And I am using my Gorilla Hot Glue Sticks. You guys know I absolutely love those. I really do feel like they are a lot stronger and give you a really good hold. So after I was done, I did test them out and they were really sturdy. So I do think that if you wanna just use the hot glue, that is totally okay, especially if you are using some flameless candles. So for my second one, I just repeated all of those steps, but instead of adding two eggs, I added three that way we can have some height difference with our candles here's a closer look at how these turned out and i really do think using that wooden egg shape for the top and the base really does give these such a unique and fun feel and now let's pair them with those bunny diy candles i think that these pair perfectly together and this candle is actually a really nice candle for $1.25. It's a little hard to see here because it is kind of bright out, but at nighttime, you can really see what a beautiful glow these candles have. The entire candle is illuminated, so you do get a lot of light from these, and it really does look so beautiful. And since these are both DIYs, you are the only one who is going to have this decor, which makes it so fun and unique. Next, we are going to be creating some decoupage eggs using these foam craft eggs from Dollar Tree. Now, these do come in a couple different sizes. I believe this is the medium size. You get eight in a pack. They do have some larger ones that are, I believe, six in a pack. I couldn't find those, so we are going to be using these slightly smaller ones today, but it is fine. Any of them will work. Next, you're just going to need some napkins that have a really pretty print on them. So since these are for Easter and spring, I found these ones at Dollar Tree. 
with a beautiful floral print. We're also going to be using some Mod Podge. Now the one I just showed was the gloss one, but I do recommend the matte Mod Podge for this craft. I actually did end up switching to that later on in the craft. So to get started, just take one of your napkins and you want to unfold it. You're going to see that there are two pieces of paper. You want to go ahead and just peel off that back white piece. We're not going to need that one. Now, just to make it easier to cut, I am going to go ahead and just fold it back into quarters and I'm either going to take scissors or a small rotary cutter and just go ahead and cut this into strips. I'm going to be showing you two different ways that you can use to decoupage these eggs. So the first is going to be the strip method with these pieces of paper here. The next one, we are actually going to be cutting out images from the napkin and adding them onto the egg. Both are really easy and fun. And I am working on a piece of parchment paper here just to make the cleanup process a lot easier. So all you have to do is just go ahead, grab one of your foam eggs and some Mod Podge and start to add Mod Podge to your egg. Now I did try to start off here with a foam brush, but later on, I just went in with my fingers. I found it a lot easier. So once you add some Mod Podge to your egg, you can take a piece of paper and just lie it on top. I also found it helpful to insert a toothpick into the bottom of the egg. That way I could hold that while I was adding my glue on. And then once you add your paper napkin up top, you do want to go ahead and put a layer of Mod Podge over it just to seal everything in place. Then you can go ahead and just let it dry completely. So like I was mentioning before, I did end up switching to the matte Mod Podge. I just thought that it gave a much better appearance. So I actually did go over my first set of eggs with the matte Mod Podge just so they would kind of all look the same. Now for the other four eggs, we're going to switch up the method a little bit. So it's going to start off the same. We're going to open up our napkin, take off that backing of white paper. We're not going to need that. But instead of cutting the napkin into strips, we're just going to be cutting out any images that we want to add on to our egg. So for me, that was just the flowers. So just like before, we're going to go ahead and get some Mod Podge onto our egg. You can see here, I completely gave up on my foam brush. I'm just going right into that glue, adding it onto my egg, and just starting to roll my paper napkin around my egg. I could have probably trimmed it down a little bit smaller, but it's okay. It kind of all works out in the end. After you have your napkin on the egg, you want to go ahead, seal it with another coat of Mod Podge, and then just let these dry overnight so they are nice and hard and ready to decorate with. So to decorate them, I'm just going to be adding them to this bowl here. And this was actually a Dollar Tree DIY from a couple years ago. So I will leave that video linked down below in case you want to check that one out. And I'm just going to be adding some Spanish moss to my bowl from Dollar Tree and then just adding my eggs on top. Really simple, but it's a nice way to display your beautiful decoupage eggs. So I did promise you guys some free printables and a two minute DIY. So that is exactly what we are doing now. So for these free printables, I did pick up these frames from Dollar Tree. And the reason I chose these is because they do tend to have them year round. They're kind of popular. So I'm hoping that you guys can very easily find these. And we are going to be filling up the entire frame. So it is going to be bigger than just that four by four image on the inside. So all you have to do is just head on over to my blog Everything is going to be linked down below in the video description box. Once you go to my blog, you're going to scroll down past the photos. You're going to see an area that says free printables. You can just go ahead, click it and print these out. So I did print mine out on photo paper. You can use regular paper. I usually do use cardstock, but I wanted to go with something a little bit different today. Then you can just go ahead and cut it out on that black line and it's going to fit perfectly into this frame. And you guys know the drill, just go ahead, add it in. But if you are new here and you have not seen me do this before, the only thing I like to do differently is just frame it above the glass. That way you don't have the glare and it kind of gives it the appearance of being more of an art print than just a framed photo. So here is how these turned out. Really cute, but also perfect if you need a last minute decor idea. And I do think that they pair perfectly with these bunny candles. Now I'm going to be showing you two different wreath options. 
And this has been much debated in my house because we could not agree which one we liked more. So you guys are definitely going to have to vote in the comments down below. For this DIY, I'm going to be using the Dollar Tree bunny wreath form as well as some of the Dollar Tree pom poms. So we have a 24 pack of pom poms and then I have two of the slightly larger 18 packs of pom poms. Now we are going to start off with our larger pom pom, the 18 pack, and I'm going to just be hot gluing them going around the circle of the bunny face. I'm just adding some hot glue to my wreath form first and then holding my pom pom on for a few seconds. After gluing two pom poms on, I decided to add a piece of parchment paper underneath my wreath form. That's just a really easy tip. If you're doing a project where you're hot gluing a lot, work on a piece of parchment paper because once the hot glue is dry, it's not going to stick to it. It will peel right off and it will keep your work area nice and clean. So right now we have the base of our bunny wreath done and now we have to do the ears. So for the ears, I'm going to be using the smaller pom poms. So these are the ones that came in the 24 pack. And there is a little bit of a trick to make sure that you cover both ears completely with just the 24 pack. So to start off with, I'm going to take two of those pom-poms and glue them in the center of the ears. Ears are so close together in that one spot, it would kind of be crowded to add two pom-poms side by side. So this way, it kind of just makes it look a little bit more seamless and it makes sure that you have enough pom-poms to fully cover both ears. So besides those two base pom-poms that are going to be the middle for both ears, you're gonna be adding 11 pom-poms to each ear individually. So 11 on the right, 11 on the left. So that would be 22. And then the leftover two pom-poms from the 24 pack are going to be the two shared pom-poms in the middle of the ears at the base. I hope I did an okay job of explaining it, but I feel like this is one of those things where it's just easier to see than to explain. So now that we have our wire wreath form completely covered, I'm gonna take two of these carrots from Dollar Tree and just hot glue them to the bottom just for some decoration. Next, I'm going to be using a carrot ribbon that I found at Dollar Tree just to add a bow to one of the ears. I figured it was perfect for a bunny wreath and I like how the ribbon matched the two carrots on the bottom. I'm just making a really simple bow here, but you can definitely get fancy. And here is option one for the bunny wreath. I think that this one definitely has a more high-end minimalist look to it and I think it's really cute but I do have a second option to show you. So for option two, we're just gonna take that same wreath, but we're going to fill in the face. And to do that, I'm gonna be using another pack of pom-poms, and these are the larger ones that come in that 18 pack. And to attach them, you can just go around in a circle and hot glue them to each other until everything is filled in just like this. And now to create a really simple face, I'm just going to be using some pink and black felt. Just felt that I already had on hand, but Dollar Tree does sell small rolls of felt in the crafter square. And for my bunny's face, I just kept the shapes really simple. I just had two eyelids with the eyelashes on the bottom, and then for the mouth, just two curves, and then a rounded triangle for the nose. And to attach everything, you can just hot glue it in place. So here is option two for the bunny wreath. And you guys will absolutely have to let me know down below in the comments which one you prefer. Everyone in my family had a different opinion, so I'm just curious to know what you guys think. I definitely think option one is a little bit more high-end and minimalist, but this one is just so cute. Next up is a really simple two-minute DIY. So when I saw this galvanized bucket at Dollar Tree, I knew I wanted to create something with it. It is really nice and I love the quality. So what I'm going to be doing is taking these little carrots here, these are the same ones I used in the last DIY, and I'm just going to be adding them to our bucket. On the front of the bucket is a little pickup truck, and it does have some carrots in the back, so I figured these were perfect for it. So in the center, I just added some raffia, and next I'm just going to be adding my carrots into the bucket. It honestly could not get more simple, but this is a really cute decoration to kind of put out anywhere. And if you want to take it one step further, you can use that same carrot ribbon just to add a little bow going around the top of the bucket. Sometimes these really simple DIYs end up being some of my favorites for the holidays. 
and I did see this sign at Dollar Tree and I thought that this would be perfect to style with this little carrot bucket. It just has the words fresh carrots on top and it just looks like a little faux cutting board. But I thought this little group here styled together would be so fun in a kitchen or just out on a table. For our next DIY, we are going to be incorporating these new items from Dollar Tree. So Dollar Tree came out with these wood beads this year, as well as these pastel wire eggs, and I knew I wanted to do something with them. So for this DIY, I'm also going to be using some twine from Dollar Tree. And to get started, I'm just going to be taking some painter's tape and adding a really long strip to my twine. So I'm basically just kind of making the twine a little bit easier to push through the beads as well as those wire eggs. And you're gonna see why in a couple minutes, but this is just going to make the whole process a lot more easy. Now, what we are going to be creating is a garland. So first you wanna take your twine and just measure out how long you want your garland to be. And then I like to make it at least five to 10 inches longer than what you're going to need just so you have a little bit of wiggle room. And now I'm just going to tie a little knot on the first end. I create a small loop with a knot. That way our garland is super easy to hang up when we are done. So now that I have it prepped, we are gonna start making our wood bead garland. So to start off with, I decided to just separate all of my colors and you do get 10 of each color in the pack. There were green beads in the pack, but I'm not gonna be using those since they don't match the pastel eggs. And the blue beads, you will see that there are 20 in there and that's only because there are 10 light and then 10 dark. So for my bead garland, I just wanna go ahead and create a pattern first. So for my pattern, I'm going to be doing pink, light blue, yellow, natural, and then dark blue. So it's gonna be a rotating pattern of those five beads plus an egg. So after I have those five on, I'm just going to push those all the way to the end and then pick out one of my eggs. And these are really easy to add on to the twine because there are a bunch of holes. So you just want to look at the bottom and just try to pick a hole that is closest to the flat bottom and then pull it all the way through to the top. We see here how adding the painter's tape will help a lot with getting that twine through the egg. That way you can kind of just push it through and you don't have to struggle with trying to pull just a loose twine through that egg. After I add my egg on, I just continue with that same pattern of wood beads and then another egg until all of my eggs were on. Now I only have six eggs on my garland because where I hang my garlands up, it's not a very large place but if you do have a larger mantle and you want to hang a garland there you can definitely double up on the eggs and the wood beads here is my garland when i was halfway done so now i'm just going to go ahead and repeat all of those steps for the rest of my garland and my second pack of wire eggs once everything was complete, I just measured exactly how long I needed my garland to be before I created my second loop and then cut off the rest of my extra twine. And now it is ready to hang up. I think that this garland has such a unique look to it. Those wire eggs are really striking. And if you do have a larger mantle to hang this up, I think it would be so eye-catching. I've had the idea for this DIY for months now. I actually was inspired to create this one when I was decorating my Valentine's Day tree from Dollar Tree. I had a really fun idea for the Easter one. So here is the Easter tree from Dollar Tree. It is just a white iridescent tree and it does come with this stand here, but we're not gonna be using that. We're gonna switch it out for something else. So this is just a piece of foam from Dollar Tree. I cut it down to size and then I just push the base of my tree into it. I will say though, if you can find the green craft foam at Dollar Tree, it is much softer and much easier to work with. So I would definitely stick with that. Now I'm gonna be adding that foam into this galvanized bucket that I found in the floral area at Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has a bunch of different options to choose from though in the Easter area as well. So now you'll see the top of the tree has this extra long piece up top and I'm just going to be bending that down and making two little bunny ears. So this one here to the right is doubled up and the one on the left is just a single wire, but I just kind of created a small U shape and this is going to be the base of our actual bunny ears that we are going to be attaching to the tree. So this is one of the headbands at Dollar Tree. They have a bunch of different ones to choose from. This one was just my favorite. 
And when you're cutting off the ears, it can be a little tricky. So there is a hard plastic piece in the center and it's gonna be too difficult to cut through. So you basically just kind of wanna cut that fabric around that plastic piece. That way you can just easily pull it off. And then you will have that empty area in the center of your tree. So you can just add that on top of those two little metal bunny ears that we created by folding the top of the tree down. And to attach it, I just use some hot glue. Next, we are going to decorate our tree, and Dollar Tree definitely has a lot of different options to choose from, but I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. I picked these egg-shaped LED lights. They also have small bunny ones, but I wanted it to match these foam eggs that I'm going to be adding on as ornaments. So you just have to add batteries to your LED lights. They do not come with batteries, but they just take two AA, and then you can just wrap them around your tree and add your egg ornaments. So we're almost done, but you will see that at the base, you can kind of see the foam peeking out in the bucket. So you will probably want to cover that up. You can use anything. I'm just taking some polyfill that I had laying around and just stuffing it in there just so you don't see the base of the tree. And now for the final touch, I found these pink gingham bunny rabbits at Dollar Tree and they matched the ears perfectly. So I just stuck those to the bottom of the bucket and your Easter tree is done. This one is just so fun. It makes me smile every time I see it. I think the ears on top are just so cute. This next DIY is another incredibly easy one that you can put together in minutes. So if you're anything like me, you will have a bunch of these carrots lying around from Dollar Tree. Every year I love to purchase them. I think they're great for DIYs, but no matter what, at the end of the season, I always have a bunch laying around. So all you wanna do is just grab a bunch of them you can have four, five, six, that's what I'm using here. And all you want to do is just get some string. You can even use twine for this. Cut a nice long piece and just tie it to the top green part of your carrot. Secure it with a knot and then just trim off the extra. And you want to do that for all of your carrots. Now that they all have a string, just go ahead and grab them all into your hand. And you do want to make sure that they are kind of laying at different heights. That way it just looks a little bit more interesting. Once you're happy with the way all of them are hanging, just go ahead and tie a knot up top. That way you can secure them in place. So next you just want to grab some bigger rope. So Dollar Tree has two different kinds that are great for this. They have the thicker twine or the nautical rope. That's what I'm using here but again either one will work so all you want to do is just kind of measure it out and we are creating a door hanger here so just a little embellishment that you can put on a doorknob so you just want to go ahead and measure it for however long you want that to be this piece that I cut here ended up being a little bit too long but I would rather have it be a little bit long and trim it down than too short so now that I cut my piece, I just went ahead, tied a nice big knot up top. That way I had a little loop that I could add to my door handle. Then I trimmed down my ends that were a little bit too long. And now I just have to add my carrots to the knot. So you can do this a ton of different ways. I found an easy way was just to take my group of carrots and kind of just take the string and push it through the knot. That way I could just very easily tie them around and secure them in place with another knot. And then once they are secure, you can go ahead and trim off any extra string. Now for the final step, I'm going to take some of this carrot ribbon and just add a bow up top. You can add a really nice big bow. That's what I really wanted to do, but I was running a little bit short on my ribbon. So this is what I had to settle for, but I do think it adds a really fun element. And now this is ready to add on to any doorknob of and your And that home. is everything for today's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you are new here, please do consider subscribing down below. And don't forget to bookmark this video so it is always super easy to find. I am working on brand new Easter Dollar Tree DIYs right now that I will be sharing very soon. So definitely come on back and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're the first to find out when I release a new video. Subscribe to my channel by just clicking on my picture right here. Thank you so much for watching.